Good morning, guys. Good morning, world. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, Philippines. Good morning, guys and gals. And yeah, my name is CJ, and I am here again with another uh, recorded artwork time lapse that I'm going to go and dissect and critique and whatnot. So it could be a lesson of sorts for you people out there. So yeah. Um, this is an old artwork of mine, uh, so it's done in a very old style that I typically don't do anymore. Um, you see me right now putting in a bunch of colors in the background, and I use this as basically just as a starting point of some sort. You know, I just put in random colors uh, as part of my background, and yeah. Anyways. Uh, I don't do this anymore. Um, I used to do this before I started really thinking of doing full-blown scenes. Um, before I would just do like subjects and whatnot. Uh, where I would have, you know, whatever it is that I'm drawing just be in the foreground and then nothing else in the background. Yeah, so the background would just be something simple like this. But nowadays, obviously, I, I plan out my scene and I'm very much more narrative oriented, I guess. Um, I do a, like a lot of narrative imagery or imagery that has some sort of narrative component to it. So, um, yeah, I think of full blown scenes essentially nowadays, but before I didn't. But anyways, I did this artwork just randomly, like uh, no prompt at all. It was just another random idea from my head. Um, it could have been inspired by the daily sketch group in conceptart.org. Um, I think Eric might have po posted like a random free day of some sort because he does that every now and then where he would just say just draw whatever you feel like drawing kind of deal. And I think it, it, I did this because it was one of those days. And so basically um, I just did a random robot, you know. I been doing like random mech sketches right around the time that I did this and um, he's I have actually posted some of those random mechs um, already uh, as videos in in my YouTube channel so you know do take a look through my video playlist and you'll see what they are but basically how I did this particular artwork was the same way I did those particular artwork which is I start out with the random mech brush, which I finally found out who made this brush. Uh, I think it's David Revoy, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Sonia Bennett from the Creative Facebook group told me that it's um, a brush that David Revoy created um, that became part of the set of generic brushes that come shipped with Krita 4 point series. Um, so yeah, I love this brush. So David Revoy, you are amazing because this brush is so awesome. And technically, you guys should just check out David Revoy and Sonia Bennett too, because she's such a great artist as well. But you should check those two people out because they're they're awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, David Revoy has like some great tips on his blog too. Like uh, I finally figured out uh, how to set up my Wacom settings. Um, because I used to press really hard on my Wacom pen and it used to be such a trouble for me. But then I read this one blog post of his and how to set it up properly and what settings it should be if you press too hard on it. And I was like, oh, this is so amazing. So yeah, do check out David Revoy. Um, he's the guy behind um, Pepper. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> can't remember the name now. Pepper and Carrot, if I'm not wrong. I'm going to look that up online real quick. Just to make sure I know what I'm talking about. But if I'm not wrong, David Revoy, Revoy is the guy behind Pepper and Carrot. Pepper and Carrot. Uh, Pepper, PepperCarrot.com is a comic, a web comic. Check it out. It's really cool. Uh, so yeah. But he's the artist behind it. Anyways. <laughs> Ah, so yeah, <laughs> how I typically do this old, old style of drawing that I used to do that I don't do anymore is that I would just basically use a random mech brush and just throw in a bunch of shapes in there. And then as soon as I throw all those crazy shapes, I try to make sense out of it. So that 
is what had transpired uh, in the fir first five minutes you just saw me just put a bunch of crazy mess um, in the scene and there's some tendrils sticking out uh, at the back of the robot uh, eventually I will knock it out as you saw in the very beginning uh, where I showed the final illustration um, so yeah I'll basically just make a mess and then as soon as I make a mess I kind of just smooth things out with the blender textured brush which you know I've talked a lot about this but this effect is kind of like pastel like in nature you know where I just throw a bunch of colors and use a smudge brush to just kind of have some form of blending going on um, kind of like the way you do with pastel so it's a very nice effect I think it's a really cool effect um so that's what i did basically is you know i throw in some random messes and then try to make sense out of it uh, i did a quick outline sketch where i want things to be uh, you see the hand with the palette and you see the hand with the brush um going towards the canvas and obviously the canvas is there um now that I've created those essential basic shapes, you'll see me start to slowly crop out the scene based on these two, uh, well, based on the figures and the shapes that I've created. Um, and yeah, you just saw me erase the, the tendrils out. But as soon as I have all these characters, I'm going to slowly just smudge all of them together into this like crazy soupy mess. And then as soon as I smudge them all together, then I refine the mess some more. And how I refine it is by basically going through my detailing process, which is I delineate my edges, you know, make some certain ed edges sharper, uh, and basically have them read a lot easier, you know, so that the shapes read easier. I says I accentuate my shadows and I add highlights. So that's what I do. Um, so that's what you'll be seeing me do in the next few minutes. Well, in the next few minutes, you'll just see me smudge. And then, yeah, I will start the detailing process. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> so, yeah, um, what I just mentioned is my typical workflow now, but I forgot that this is my old workflow. And in this old workflow, I really wanted, uh, I guess I really wanted a far more defined um, shape and sense out of this whole robot thing. So right now is what you see me do is I'm actually just going back and just outlining some forms. Um, this is not like the whole delineating edges because typically when you delineate my edge, when I delineate my edges, I typically just use the surrounding colors to just kind of create the shapes. But this one, I'm actually going back with a black, you know, with a dark color to really define my outline and my shapes. And so um, eventually what I'll end up doing is I'll more than likely, um, end up smudging all of these lines together with uh, the colors I have down already but I'm probably gonna if I'm not wrong I might have gone back with some multi with the multiply brush to just kind of add some more shadows and probably add some more highlights is probably what I'm gonna end up doing um, so yeah there's actually a, quite a lot of refining process that went on with this particular illustration but yeah more than likely that's what you'll see me do which is after this whole outlining thing uh, i'll add a little bit more shadows i'll add a little bit more highlights smudge things again and then start the detailing process
so since this was um, done in my old technique obviously you can tell that my process really hasn't been fully refined yet as of this point um, it looks like you know I go back and forth to smudging and then to adding some shadows then adding highlights then detailing then smudging again um, nowadays I typically do my smudging just once for the most part and then pretty much after that is just all detailing but you saw me go back and forth through my process on this one because everything was kind of new to me I guess at this point and I guess I was still kind of like an, in an experimental stage so it's absolutely cool and nice to be watching something like this that I did a while back which is obviously not something that I don't do or so, which is obviously something that I don't do anymore as much but yeah it's totally intriguing um, also I didn't get the chance to talk about where my idea came from I, I mean I know I talked that a talk about you know this drawing being like a random uh, drawing probably for daily sketch group um, maybe for daily sketch group I'm not sure if it was or not but it's absolutely just random obviously um, but anyways um, I love it you know I love this whole weird idea of of a robot painting like I'm not even really sure where the idea came from I kept thinking like it's Bob Ross influence but I'm almost sure that it wasn't Bob Ross because I haven't actually watched Bob Ross in quite some time uh, so I don't know if if it was Bob Ross or not but it kind of feels like Bob Ross though because I mean the robot has spikes on the back of his head so it looks like he has an afro I mean, I, I don't know. I could be totally misreading that. So I'm not sure. But anyways, I'm not really sure where the idea came from. But it is absolutely interesting that it came from, you know, something. <laughs> so yeah. But right now, uh, as I mentioned, I, you know, have been smudging, re-smudging, then adding details, then re-smudging again. And eventually you kind of see me give up on the whole body and just kept the body messy uh kind of like the way i did with the canvas like the canvas is absolutely messy and i just left it as that right and eventually i kind of ended up doing the same thing um with the body because i think at this point i was like nearing the one hour mark and i'm not really sure if i was um trying to aim for time i i really don't remember because this was way back in 2019 when I did this. Nowadays, when when I finish when I do my speed paints, I typically have the composition first in mind. Like I want to finish the composition that I want in my mind in like certain areas of that composition. I, I need I want to be able to finish, and then I have the time factor at hand. Uh, behind that so that's the reason why some of my speed paints like I try to aim for my speed paints to be three hours three hours max of painting you know sometimes I'll add an hour of blocking in blender but for the most part if it just starts out as a sketch straight to painting then you know I would just try to aim for like three hours or so but I always I have been running over three hours lately you know like some of my paintings illustration as of late has been going all the way up to seven hours which is just too long personally for a speed paint you know uh, so yeah I've been trying to limit it but this one was just an hour and again like I said I don't know if I was just trying to cut myself short or whatnot but I think this is just about the point where I decided to call it quits and just kind of left it loose because the whole picture reads anyways I mean you could we could look at it from afar and you can see that it, it reads fairly well so yeah I think at this point I was just like well let's just wrap this up because it's looking nice anyways from afar so I obviously didn't detail the body nowhere near as much as I detailed the face but I think it's effective you know I mean it has its own charm for sure uh, it's definitely not like my random mech sketches those sketches were really cool but you know it does have its own charm so yeah um, anyways I'm just totally adding the final touches to this one um, 
I don't know if I did anything else with the background anymore. I know I desaturated it just so that the foreground could read a little bit better. But that I did that a while back. I don't know if I desaturated it even more. Um, I think I might have just left it as is. But yeah, that's the end of the painting. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.